the name of the Lord. And so we have a very special guest here uh, this morning. I've already paved the way uh, somewhat for you, Dr. Glover, who is a good friend of mine. And uh, we've already done some work together in Dallas when I was pastoring there for over 20 years. And uh, he would stop by the church and we invited him to come in and share some of the very, very powerful things that he has to share about our history, uh, a.k.a. Professor Freedom. Somebody shout Professor Freedom. Taking the chain off your brain so that your mind can work. And so Dr. Glover is 40 plus years a veteran of, sil of the civil rights movement. A protege of Mrs. Coretta Scott King, Mrs. Rosa Parks, Dr. Ralph David Abernathy, Dr. C.T. Vivian, Congressman John Lewis, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and Dr. Bernard Lafayette. And Professor Glover took up the mantle of the Civil Rights Movement Phase Two, and at age 66 years young, he has been an instrumental person in achieving what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King called institutionalizing nonviolent social change. In the 80s, he established the Department of Intercultural Relations and Minority Student Affairs at Southern Methodist University as an adjunct professor of African American studies, teaching the popular course Black and White. He also discovered Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, 1966 SMU speech, which the university recently placed um, in Texas historical marker at McFarland Auditorium where Dr. King spoke. And uh, Professor Glover in the 90s was also the founder of the Department of Intercultural Education of Dallas Independent School District, where he served as special assistant to the general superintendent. While at SMU and DISD, he developed diversity harassment policies, which were among uh, uh, the first in the nation. In the 80s, Pat Professor Glover served as chairman of the Dallas NAACP Police Community Relations Committee that guided the Dallas Police Department in the nation's first police reform acts by revising the deadly force policy from property over life to life over property. Eliminate the deadly chokehold and developing multicultural education training for the Dallas Police Academy. Uh, let me say this before he comes. Also, Professor Glover, through his company, Sankofa Education Services, has been instrumental in researching the history of Dallas African-American communities giving special attention to the periods of slavery and Jim Crow. He is a subject matter expert in the area of African-American cotton pickers who during these eras served as the economic base for the South and the emergence of the uh, African, I'm, I'm sorry, the American uh, Industrial Revolution and the building of Dallas. He's well qualified, well educated, a scholar, um, has a master of theological education, uh, African American studies um, from SMU Perkins School of Theology, graduate of Harvard University, graduate school of education with a certification in, in uh, moral education and human development. And so we can see that he's an erudite scholar. And uh, beyond that, he's a preacher of the gospel, pastor par excellence, senior pastor of the first African Freedom Church in Dallas, Texas, and Bonoir, Ghana, which is West Africa. A brother beloved, a friend, and uh, you will see that the Holy Spirit will further introduce him as he comes before us. And uh, Dr. Glove, I want to... Uh, let you know that we do have an online audience. We're on Facebook Live and YouTube Live as well as you speak. 
and present this morning. So just don't focus on the people in here. We got some people online who are live. And uh, if you need to move around, we'll give you about 15 minutes to share this morning because we feel like you have something very powerful and poignant to share with us. God bless you is our prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All praises to the mighty name of Yahweh. Hallelujah. We bless you this morning. We acknowledge you this morning. Hmm. I wasn't expecting this preaching. A stone stood. A sanctuary full of memories. Iron bent in the symbolic image of the Adinkras of West Africa. In every rail on your porch and in your doorway. Symbolically meaning that you reach back to your past to know from whence you come. It is the symbol of the Adinkra, and A D I N K R A, Adinkra, from the Sankofa bird. To the elders in the room, mothers and fathers, may I have permission to continue? Thank you. <sighs> I'm caught up right now because I don't know what to do. <laughs> Speak or preach. So we ask for your prayer. Father, Mother God, we come before your presence this morning with your Holy Spirit empowering us, seeking to do your holy will in your world, God, right now. I'm not the preacher, but just a pre instrument through which the preacher preaches. Come now, Holy Spirit, with all your quickening power and kindle now within these cohorts of ours flames of sacred love. Let your spirit fall fresh on us to say, Shekinah glory, even now, that your people might receive through your preachers and your prophets and your priests right now, this morning, that we might minister right now, even this moment, this hour, during this season of Dr. Carter G. Woodson, when he sought to let us remember this week, Negro History Week, and then African American Heritage Month, not to end here, but only to begin here, never to forget from where we've come. For we know that it's in remembering that we move forward, by placing the stones there, Joshua knew that the children had to know who brought them over. May we come today to lay foundations for our children and our children's children. Bless even this place today, O oh God, that has been built in your, in your worship for your worship. I see mothers in the audience who have been here a long time. I see fathers and I feel spirits set up for hallelujah. feel a presence even now that your children may be in your presence for through your son Yeshua the Messiah Jesus the Christ who split the veil and have access to the Holy of Holies now that we might stand with you in sacred space come now Holy Spirit with all your quickening power and kindle now within these cold hearts of ours sacred love in your name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> when I spoke to me, this Holly shared, I said to her, I would share 10 minutes and pastor's giving me five extra. Is it man? the drama praise. 
the instrument that was outlawed in America because it rang out messages to our people. I come this morning in memory of all of our ancestors who gather in this place, for we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. This is my last day of this month. It's been very grueling. So I bring you memories and to the young people I come, and you mentioned those my, who have been my mentors, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, my teacher, Mrs. Rosa Parks, my teacher, my family in Ghana, West Africa, the House of Glover, hallelujah. I bring you greetings from St. Paul's CME Church in Belcher, Louisiana, where I was baptized and ordained. And the land was deeded by my great-great-grandfather, Wash Bradford the first, for church and school purposes. I wish to say to you today, in these few moments I have with you, that we now have a charge before us to take these stones, these seats, and these rooms that our ancestors used for church and school purposes. For those who are still waiting on somebody to educate us, I hear that a lot now. They don't teach us that in school. I've, brought, I've come to bring a word to your church this morning. They are not supposed to teach you that in school. Pharaoh doesn't teach Israel. I, I, I'm just supposed to be speaking. You preach. Oh, glory. Pharaoh not supposed to teach Moses. Pharaoh was not supposed to teach Joshua. And if you're waiting around for Pharaoh to tell you about your grandmama. Oh, y'all didn't hear me today. If you're waiting for Pharaoh to tell you about your granddaddy. If you're waiting for Pharaoh to teach you how to grow collard greens. If you're waiting on Pharaoh to teach you how to sing, precious Lord, hold my hand, take my hand, lead me on, and I have a word for you. Pharaoh ain't going to teach you. You see, this morning, church, we have come to an intersection of history. I want to let you know who you really are. Oh, my God. There is a great debate going on with Kay and Wes and Kyrie and all these other young folk about who we really are. And everybody is upset. My bishop, Joseph A. Johnson, Jr., my mentor, in his work talked about the Judeo-Christian. Oh, you don't hit me today. I grew up on the Judeo-Christian theology. 
What does that mean, preacher? That means that we are not just and do not just embrace the New Testament as a basis of our theological and spiritual understanding, but rather we are grounded deeply in the Old Testament biblical experience. We are not simply Pauline theologians. Our story does not come began with Paul or Saul of Tarsus. That's not where we start. We are not Corinth. We are not Laodicea. We are not, oh come on church, Greeks and Romans. That's not who we are. But rather, woo, mm, we I see somebody say, play the drum, but spirit on me now, my sister. <laughs> yes. I told you, you got me into something I can't get out of, right? Yes, I see you. I'm talking to you. But the drum will come. But now, just like they silenced the drum, they silence who you are. For they took the child and carried him into Egypt. And there they hid him. Hid him amongst his people. So that prophecy might be fulfilled out of Egypt have I called my son. I'd like to modify that this morning. Out of Africa. Out of Africa have I called my son. Then time passes. There while on his way to cavalry. There was a man by the name of Simon, of Cyrene, a black man. Walking to cavalry, broken down, beaten, whipped, shackled. The soldiers looked over and said, there's another one right there. Looks just like him. Another black man. Take the cross and put it on his shoulder. I believe my Bible says that. And it, he carried it behind Yeshua the Messiah, the proper Hebrew, all the way up to Golgotha. A black man with a cross. We've been bearing crosses. We are Simon's people. We are Yahshua's people. 
we are those who were scattered. And when they came here, they, the men took the iron and put symbols in the iron. Sankofa, you will come home one day. One day. As I leave you today, I pray that this is a beginning, not an ending. For in the beginning was the beat. And the beat was the rhythm of God. And the rhythm of God became the harmony of humanity. And when there's harmony, there is peace. I encourage you to listen to sounds of blackness. We are the drum. My student used those words with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. We are the drum, we are the drum, from Africa to America, we are the drum, we are the drum, we are the drum, from Africa to America, we are the drum. Teach, but remember the other songs, the songs of the cotton field. Remember those songs as well so that you might not forget that as Joshua placed the stones, I placed the cotton. Cotton. So that you will never forget and that when your children's children ask you, what does that cotton mean? You will remind them that it was the Lord our God who brought them out of bondage. Nobody. The trouble I see, nobody knows my sorrow, nobody knows the trouble I see, glory children to come forward, all the children, all the children, for we must begin to plant the new seed, all the children, we forget about them in our worship, this is what this season is about, this is what the people of Israel do at the feast of the Passover, I say, which means truly, I'm going to ask the pastor to come help me. Oh, somebody, just take the cotton, please. He's the pastor. And give each one a piece of cotton. Hallelujah. And as he gives them the cotton, it is a memorial to ask your grandmother and your grandfather, what does this cotton mean? Hallelujah. For on the night of the Passover, the children ask, what makes this night so different? from any other night 
It is the night that our ancestors were brought out of Israel. What is December 31st, 1862? It is this night that our ancestors were brought out of slavery. What is June 19th, 1865? It is the day that our ancestors heard in Texas that we were free. What means this cotton? This cotton means that we are free. This cotton means that we built a nation. This cotton means that we are strong, broken but not vowed. This cotton means that we are God's people, that you are somebody. This cotton means it is time for us to stand up and be the people of God, the Israel of God. Hallelujah. Good night. 